a board meeting. This meeting is being recorded. You say we have to say who's here? Yeah, call the roll, Mr. Chairman. Call the roll. All right, folks, welcome this evening. Joe Deedy is chairman. I have uh, Mr. Fox as vice chair. I have Mr. Moglin as secretary. And I have um, Carl is on Zoom. Administrative assistant. Administrative assistant is here in Solak. And um, we have two folks in the audience. So hopefully that covers that issue. We'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. John. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We changed the layout today, folks, to see if that helps or doesn't help as far as uh, hearing us in person and hopefully on Zoom, maybe it'll make a difference too. We'll see. First up, 605 is our first appointment. So we'll acknowledge payable warrant 2219 dated 2122 in the amount of $255,646.98. I need a motion for open session minutes dated 13122. Russ Fox will make that motion. Doug Mogan will second the motion, Mr. Chairman. Wonderful. Thank you. And let's see. You didn't take the vote. Vice your vote. What's that? You didn't Price take the vote. Oh, I'm sorry. All those in favor? Joe DDI. Russ Fox aye. Doug Mogan aye. I'm like, what dog that out? What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the vote. <laughs> so is your right then. All right. Close enough to 605. What do you got? Is Mr. Uh, do you see him on there? Yes, he is. Rick Johnson. We may as well take him. Want to let Rick Johnson in? He's in. He's in. You can unmute yourself, Rick. There we go. Good evening, folks. Good evening. Good evening. How are you today? Doing great. Doing great. Thank you very much. Wonderful. So, what's new for the WIC this year that we need to know about, sir? Basically, the schedule that I put in there is uh, almost identical to last year. You know, it includes uh, all of the same players, um, plus the national on July 9th. Um, we have a new program. You know, we've been trying to get this learn to ride and, and learning center off the ground for a while. COVID got in the way and, and economics got in the way. But we have uh, been fortunate enough to put together a program with uh, Pilgrim Cycle Center here near me in Plymouth, uh, Stasic. I don't know if you're familiar with Stasic. S-T-A-C-Y-C -C stands for Stability Cycles. Uh, they represent little tiny bikes that are electric, and um, that's the way people are learning now to, to ride safely and so forth. So we have six on the way. We're going to build a tiny little track for them. And uh, this is kind of a grassroots to uh, to you know, keep keep the kids coming up through the through the ranks. I'd love to make a connection with the schools around our area and invite them over there, and certainly um, uh, give a, a, a break, if not uh, some freebies, to our own folks in, in Southwick. Um, we get some kids out there as young as three years old, so that's kind of fun, and we're looking forward to that. We're going to tie those in with our Wednesday night um, learning sessions that we have right now. And we'll filter them into whatever weekend events we have that make sense. On the national side, we've uh, just signed a new three-year agreement with MX Sports. Uh, the network television and title sponsors <coughs> have still uh, yet to be finalized, so we're, wor we're working on that. We're also putting in a new team manager's tower. And it's actually portable. We're not going to own it. We're, we contribute to the cost of making it, but it'll be used uh, throughout all of the series. So we're kind of looking forward to that, too. And as, as it always goes, um, I sent the schedule in for your approval. And the next day, I got three more uh, organizations asking to get in. Not everybody makes their schedule in February. We try our best to, to put it all down, but... Um, Basically, um, I think we're looking at a, a good year coming up. Uh, looking forward to it. And um, I leave it to you folks to ask any questions. Thank you. Any questions, Mr. Fox? <clears throat> no, I think uh, Rick uh, has done an excellent job. Uh, and it certainly has uh, helped promote Southwick as a recreational destination. And uh, 
certainly we're having an economic uh, spinoff from it. So, uh, and I know as nonprofits, uh, some of the other events have helped the nonprofits with their programs. So, uh, I haven't heard any complaints. So that's the, the best thing. Uh, Rick, what uh, what day you you mentioned you add a few more to this? What dates were those uh, going to be? What events? No, I, the ones that came in this week or this past week, Carl. It's too early to really sift them out. You know, we we do our due diligence before we bring anybody in. Uh, okay. Dunlop, Dun, Dunlop is one event that we know they want to. It has to do with the, the availability of equipment. Uh, that's the only one that I really couldn't pin them down on a date yet. Okay. All right. So you'll be you'll be submitting for a uh, uh, an adjustment at some future date. It, it for them, yes. And and what I'll try to do, and I do this whenever possible, is uh, you know a lesser priority are the open practices that we do because it doesn't upset the rest of the, the apple cart. <clears throat> so whenever I can, I, I, if I have to bring something in new, I do something that you've already approved for an event that day. Okay. Mr. Moglin? No, I think it's great. Looking forward to the national on July 9th, right? Yeah. It is, yeah, yeah. I don't have a problem with it. Um, as some people may know, we do some of the food vending down there, so I will not vote on this. Um, and I do thank you, Rick, for using local vendors. It, we do appreciate it as much as the, the parking for the rec center and even uh, Wally Park, you know. Behind the scenes, you generate a lot of money for this town that uh, people sometimes uh, take advantage of and abuse you verbally. And sometimes, <laughs> you actually just, sometimes you actually just say thank you, you know. But uh, we do appreciate it. And, and Russ is right. You know, the complaints, they're, they're, they're far and few between. It's not like it used to be. You guys definitely run a tight ship over there, and it does show. Thank so you. I'm to motion to approve this. Russ Fox will make the motion to approve the proposed schedule. Doug Mogan will second the motion, Mr. Chairman. All those in favor, Joe yep. Beatty will abstain. Russ Fox, aye. Doug Mogan, aye. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Have a good evening, folks. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So first up, PVPC Transportation Improvement Program, known as TIP, and the 2023 Unified Planning Work Program Development Schedule. You guys have that? Yeah. Yeah, this, this really speaks to the issue of, uh, you can see that there'll be a meeting coming up and when you were talking about um, infrastructure projects coming up this will be one of the mechanisms that randy and dick will participate in to start seeing about us um, trying to um, figure out how to do our, uh, a well-ranked project for the future obviously a lot of the projects that are already designed and permitted are going to get the benefit of that first year federal money but if we're interested in accessing that at some point in the future we're going to have to look at maybe some allocations of either um you know through some fund source quite possibly the chapter 90 that we talked about or or free cash or something like that to get uh, at least two more of these uh, designs underway because Randy's uh, just about running out of projects that are already designed and permitted. We talked about it last week, didn't we? That we need to start exactly. looking, looking at our future and getting yep. stuff ready. I, yep. I had a follow up. Uh, Mr. Grinnell's on the same topic this morning regarding kind of coming up with a list to come back to us with to say this is the ones that we should be working on. He mentioned right. a couple of bridges. He mentioned 57, Beating Hills Road, or other. Yep. Okay. So there's one project on the tip right now in 2026 to resurface College Highway right. from the town line to Tannery. Right. Which and is that curve at some point too, right? So apparently not before 2026. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> and, and probably not for 10 years after if they're gonna pave it. So yeah, yeah. that's what I was just trying to do that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you. 
All right, next up, PVPC invoice number seven, Southwood Community Assistance Program, the amount of $2,942.85. And that's to do with North Lake Ave, Engineering and Design, a Housing Rehabilitation Program, our Community Food Pantry, and Administration. Yes, Fox will make the motion for $2,942.85. Doug Mobile, no second the motion. All those in favor? Joe Didi, aye. Russ Fox, aye. Doug Mobile, aye. Thank you. Bicycle parking zoning bylaw change request from citizen. Mr. Austin, I don't see him on Zoom here. Uh, Mr. Austin had reached out to me via the, the website. Yep. Um, I had encouraged him to talk to our esteemed planner, Mr. Goddard, and he did go in front of the planning board last week. The kid has some good ideas around um, adding parking for bicycles, bike racks and space for, for that at business locations and uh, dense residential like apartments, condos, et cetera. Um, my suggestion to John at first was to take a look at the parking bylaws. We have an update coming for that, that this would be something that they could incorporate um unfortunately it's a little late in the game for this year's town meeting given the plate of the, the planning board and and the upcoming town meeting agenda but this certainly is worthy of discussion and mr austin had come back and kind of was asking for us to jump in and just pass a law and i i kind of explained to him that that's not quite the process but um i admire his enthusiasm to try to work the process he's also doing a similar work in uh, Westfield at this time. So, uh, with the board's permission, I, if you needed to designate a person to work with Mr. Austin um, and the planning board on a, a potential future Warren article, I put my proverbial hat in the ring to do that just because of that's where the contact started. Yeah, we have that. And we also have the, uh, the, the Jake break issue out there too that was discussed at some point. Mm -hmm. um, so, we should probably look at that at the same time as far as getting something. That one, yeah. the Jake break issue is more of a town bylaw. Yeah. Parking, I mean, this the bike thing really does fall under parking. Yeah. There is opportunities for grants and so on available for businesses to equip their existing facilities with bike racks and so on. He's got all kinds of ideas around the best types and designs and space. And, oh, yeah, there's some beautiful and, stuff. And out numbers there. of how to do it. He's really done his homework. He's done a great job. Um, and I, I just think for, for Southwick, the best the best approach is obviously it's going to be more of a carrot thing is, you know, if businesses want to attract bicyclists, that's a great way to do it. And we're, as we get through more construction projects that are going to require more of this complete street stuff and bike lanes and so on, it's going to be conducive. You know, look at well, we got Red's it. Cafe, right? Look how they're catering yeah. to that segment coming off the rail trail and they've got all kinds of bike parking and everything. But, you know, through the center and other places in town, there is opportunity for them to want to do it. I personally don't think the right way to do it is just we pass a bylaw and make it that everybody's got to come into compliance by a date. It's just, we yeah. generally don't do that. Right. But it seems like it economically, it makes sense. And then if the planning board has a new project that comes in, whether it's dense residential or another commercial development or something like that, if the parking bylaw was there that you have to provide it, it's there and you provide it. And so all new construction just automatically gets it as a matter of course. So it's a good topic for further discussion for a future town meeting. I would agree. Mr. Fox? Didn't the economic development or the planning board work on something like this in the past? Because I remember somebody coming in talking about uh, approaching different businesses to set aside certain areas. There, I remember something about it. It was also with walkability and benches right, and somewhere right. else in that same thing. Oh, yeah. And, um, and I yep, forgot one yep. important thing is we're also going to encourage Mr. Austin to come in front of the master plan advisory committee because transportation is a key component of the master plan. And so to have this, you know, modality included in it is going to be important. So he'll get his chance at, with that as well, because if that's in the master plan, you, I, I think this can be done even sooner than master plan type work. But right. if it's done as part of the master plan, when they go and do start looking at zoning as it relates to implementing the master plan, this would get caught up in that too automatically. As we get Depot Street finalized. This would be a great thing. Yep. People could come off the rail trail, either walking or by bike, and get to the downtown area. Correct. Um, and uh, certainly uh, it would be good for any new businesses, I think. But 
I think there's businesses out there if they're approached, exactly. especially if there's grant funding yep. to yeah. help assist. There's grants. And um, you know, I, I encourage them to look into that and also, you know, whether that, you know, where, where there are potential grants rather than the carrot approach is way better than the stick approach. It, absolutely. It, you know, it always works better. And um, I think yeah, he's I'm not a fan of telling a business they've got to put a bike rack up front. No, if but they're a smart enough business and they rely on that type of stuff like correct. I do, no, yes, it's there. Right. Absolutely. And, but he had all kinds of great ideas on, you know, he had pictures of types of bike oh, racks that are better real or nice worse stuff or, out there. Yeah. you know, how to do it and what kind of, and then even number of spaces for bikes versus cars, depending on the type of business and area. It, it was very well thought out. I, I, I commend yeah. Mr. Austin and I think he's going to do good things. And, you know, unfortunately he kind of ran into the, you know, it's zoning. It's like the most onerous thing in town, any town government to change, right? right? It's, you got to go in front of a public hearing. You got to go in front of a town meeting. You got to get a two thirds vote. It's got to go back here. It, it's not like a simple, you know, if it was a little bylaw in town, we could just say, yeah, okay. Right. But this is zoning. And so it, it is a little bit more of a process. So he's going to get his education. Bit of an introduction into the education yeah, of how zoning great. works. Right. Yeah. But, Wonderful. So, yes, Mr. Mogan, it's all yours. Oh, thanks. And, and we, thank you. And we appreciate it. Uh, Accept state grant from Mass Cultural Council for the amount of seven thousand five hundred dollars. Box like that. that. Yeah. Cool. Carl. No, that came in through the uh, our Cultural Council to the accountant's office, and she wants to make sure that you vote to that before she can uh, finish processing um, those funds, and you know, bring them and set up a. Uh, a grant account for them. Okay. So you just need a motion to approve? Yes. All right. Plus five will make that motion. Judge Bogan will second the motion. All those in favor, Joe DD aye. Plus Fox aye. Yeah. Oh, Doug Bogan aye. Thank you. Appreciate it. Approved planning is Ice LLC related to municipal wireless consultant services. Sir, John Goddard, how are you this evening? I am Doug. <clears throat> so tonight uh, we are requesting um, approval by the select board to endorse uh, that contract with Isotrope uh, for the wireless service district. Um, there was one minor change to the draft agreement that was circulated uh, just a few weeks back. Um, a member of the planning board mentioned that we want to make sure that the analysis uh, includes, if you will, uh, recommendations to the district itself physically uh, on a plan, not just, uh, if you will, to the bylaw um, and not just, if you will, in general. Because we are trying to figure out, again, I hesitate because a lot of this technology is evolving. I am not your resident expert on this technology. Um, and frankly, there might be parts of the bylaw that don't make sense anymore. But the idea is to make sure that if we continue with um, a map district, that we get those recommendations as well. So that was built into a uh, minor amendment uh, under the deliverables. But the uh, planning board has advanced this to your table. Careful. Any questions, Mr. Fox? No. Nope. I think uh, it's a great idea. I think we've been behind it. Yeah. Uh, you know, we saw the situation that developed uh, with the last proposed cell tower. So, um, if you're looking for a motion, I will make that motion to approve. Doug Mogan will second the motion. And again, with the thanks to the planning board for doing this work. Yep. And the funds are there for this, right, Carl? Yes, you had uh, voted for a uh, finance committee reserve request. That committee did appropriate them and they have been deposited in the appropriate account. And the town accountant did, um, if you look at the last page, the signing page, there is a not to exceed value. And I'm sure John and Mr. Darty will make sure that the uh, dollar amounts stay within the authorized value. In second, all those in favor, Joe D. D. I. Russ Fox, uh, Doug Mogan, I. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you very much, John. How's it going upstairs? See you tomorrow. Is that
right. Approve updated letter of understanding services agreement with library director. Yeah, it's in your personnel section, but it's it's the one that uh, Joe and I worked out with her. It's in your envelope, Mr. Yeah, Mr. Vice Chair. Yeah, I'm really in my envelope. Oh, is it? Yeah. yeah. Oh. In the wood is Lynn e. Blair. E. Blair. Congratulations. Up. You get a new three year deal with the town of Southwood. Yeah. What was second prize? Four years. Yeah. Someone making faces, Diane? Okay. Making sure because we can't always see. As long as there's nobody with faces anyway. I didn't look over here, I saw you. Who mm -hmm. worked this out? Mm -hmm. Me and Mr. Steinhardt. Okay. So you're in agreement with it? Yeah, we, we met with uh, Chairman um, Mike Ann, too. Yeah. So okay. this is to re renew her for years four, five, and six. She's been with us for three years and done a great job. Yeah. So yeah. And this is what the board authorized the chair and myself to do. All right. Then I, I have will it before make, you for action. I will make the motion to approve. The letter of understanding between the town of Southwick and Lynn E. Blair. Right. I Wonderful. I vote going to second the motion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Carl, for working that out. That was probably the simplest one we ever did. So, all those in favor, Joe D. D. I. Russ Fox, I. I vote going to New, we have uh, authorized CAO to handle Veterans District Board of Governors FY23 budget. Russ Fox will make that motion. Doug Moglin will second the motion. All those in favor, Joe D. D. I. Russ Fox, uh, Doug Moglin. Uh, 23 health insurance rates. I have a letter from Michelle Hill and it's the bottom line. It says, please plan for a zero increase in rates for medical and dental. For this fiscal period. Yeah, for uh, 2023. But beware of next year. Always beware of next year. So obviously, you know, we're gonna, that's gonna be a good thing in terms of that employee benefit line item, but yeah. we'll be dealing with other issues relating to um, proposed payments and other separation pay issues, uh, buyback of sick leave, things of those other issues that we're working on. So, uh, so this is a good thing to, uh, to have happen. Yeah, <clears throat> that's just an FYI, correct? Yeah, that goes into the budget uh, calculation yep. line items by the town accountant. But it is important for the board to acknowledge it because it's one of your largest line items. Correct. Okay. Oh, thank you. All right. So then I have the PVPC financial warrant number two in the amount of $1,927.89. Uh, the bill looks like it's actually $1,977.89. I think that's a typo, Mr. Chair. Then we will go with Mr. Fox's recommendation. I will make that in the form of a motion. Yeah, this is for the green communities. I'll second that motion. Right, that's for your green energy consultant services. All those in favor? 
Go to the I plus five ten. All right. Under new business, we have goals, review goals and objectives. Right. It's been a while since we've gone through that sheet, and I know uh, the board has been able to address some of the issues that had on it, and then there's going to be other issues that you're going to want to place on it, uh, primary of which will be the, um, well, obviously the fiscal 23 uh, budget uh, document that we want to create and bring forward to town meeting, and yes. the fire chief recruitment process. Did the sidewalks on depot, is that completely done now? No. No, what do we have no. left? We got a short section. That's from, right. Right. From uh, yeah. depot court to uh, the uh, town. That's right. Okay. And then that should be yep. in good shape. The sidewalk yep. system safe route to schools? Uh, <laughs> I think the pandemic is, uh, yeah. put put that thing way behind on the burner. I mean, the regional school, we had meetings, they're, they're uh, doing their part. Yep. They're, they're uh, done a couple of things and working with the police department. So just have to wait and see uh, when this pandemic is over, where we, where we can go with it. Okay. Economic development outreach program. <coughs> I'd say that's the same thing, the same yeah. problem. You know, the pandemic has is, is, is really caused a, a lot of slowdowns and um, Congamon Road reconstruction awaiting mass DOT closeout. All right, that's still going on with uh, Randy and Mark Begg Lane. So um, uh, we want to keep that there. Oh yeah, I'm that's sure more of a, that's not a construction related issue. That's just more of a punchless paperwork. Finger that's, pointing at how much. But yeah. I guess that's not a goal for the select board at this point anymore, right? Yeah, it's all over but the shouting. We we still have to do some yelling and screaming. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the next item, I know the uh, the vendor that we you know we're dealing with the IT project and the the vendor thing with the state EOTs. Yep. On the uh, on some of the um, uh, you know transition, so we're we're working with the uh, appropriate state agencies on how that relates to the public safety component. Correct. And then community compact. Community. Yeah. For, uh, let's see the revenue and expenditure model one that was done because I had uh, provided that to you in September and also when with the finance committee yep. so we can we can certainly take away that portion of the re model the capital planning one is is uh, being finished up so that'll be coming forward soon okay uh, we're going to modify that one but still keep the capital plan part on it okay all right i believe number I'm seven is done it it, it it's done there's some monies left over that the civic that my civic fund has and we're going to do some remodeling hopefully at the center of town on the uh, town green which we told you guys about a couple of months ago so but that's um, a that's a donation from a non-profit yeah i think you can, I think you can get rid of it yeah i think it can go away okay great number eight transfer station recycling i think randy told us some good news uh last meeting but uh, once again starting to uh, get some revenue rather than uh, expend money yeah and i think uh, everybody's been aware of it i think randy is promoting it uh, recycling yep. uh, we're very lucky the lions organization is is up their game with uh, trying to get the uh, returnables out of the flow so that helps us uh, it does yeah so you know and i think randy has adjusted the prices and continues to adjust the prices, uh, you know, uh, where he sees there's uh, a need to charge to recycle certain items like uh, TVs and 
mattresses. So I, I think we could remove this at this time. And, yeah. That's fine. Okay. Update on the rename 911 project. Yep. Uh, I believe that's done. Um, ben has notified all the people and all the addresses were changed. I know, uh, let's see, Lieutenant Banish is on our call here, and I believe he can confirm that the signage on the roads have also been changed. Mr. Banish, is that correct? Uh, I haven't personally been up there as of yet. I know that's what was uh, in the works. They had changed the signage. Uh, the only thing they had left, I believe, was the uh, actual unit numbers on the houses. They have temporary ones up right now. Red, you, you think we can remove that from this list? I believe so at this point. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you, Lieutenant. No problem. Ad hoc high speed internet committee. Mr. Moglin is working on Survey's that. done. I yeah. had a conversation today with Mr. Sullivan. We're just putting together some dates to get together. So and now I have someone who is going to support the board secretarily because our secretary had left and yep. then the replacement left the ability to do it. So now we have a new one. So I'll get some dates in front of Rick and we'll get a meeting together. Wonderful. Station masonry and roof. The uh, obviously the roof pot's done. The, the uh, there's still a punch issue with the uh, downspouts related to um, the cleaning of the masonry. And yep. then there's a punch um, a order to be done. And then there's also the closeout on that other issue we added with the oval window repair. Um, as far as the chief has observed, we don't have any coming in anymore and that's been resolved, but we still need to clean it all up and do all the interior work and, and um, you know, just close out the, uh, the open areas. Okay. That one. It's radio interference. But eating Doritos, right? No, nope, that's I, good. I look, I, first thing I looked at, right? Yeah, same thing here. I was like, oh, God, here we go again. That could just be someone's cell phone being picked up. Yeah, I wish I could understand. Do you understand? I think the Martians are landing. Yeah. Well, isn't that nice yeah, that actually? What a segue into number 15 about the Channel 15 network. <laughs> yeah. All right. Oh, good evening, this. Ken. Ken, it's nice yeah. to see you, Ken. Thank you, Carl. Thanks, Ken. Yeah. Establish Channel 15 volunteer network. Recruit people to train and film. Well, I think uh, Joe and I have uh, made some good headway there with, uh, with Ken and some of the people he knows, and then also working with Peter. So I think we're making good progress there. Yeah, I would agree. Oh, volunteer opportunities and reappointments. Doug to visit boards and committees. Doug, how are you making out with that? Oh, great so far. I mean, okay. Talking to anybody who will listen. I think as a board in the next couple of weeks, next couple of meetings, that we start putting together a little package together to be sent out and post uh, to each board and commission, uh, as well as for posting on channel 15 and on the website that we're looking for people to come out for boards and commissions for appointments that will be available after town meeting. Okay. For the, you know, the June timeframe. Did you shut that off somehow? I, I didn't do it. Oh, right. I was going to go over there and then you called my name, but. Oh, wonderful. Robin fixed it. Beautiful. Review transportation services for COA. I know uh, Cindy Sullivan's been meeting with the, uh, uh, let's see, Franklin Regional. And I think the, um, the bringing on that new transportation software, their discussion today was that they want to see how that works to handle that gap and go from there. And then they, we can revisit whether or not this is still an issue in the future. Thank you. 
Carl, did PV, PG, PC ever get back? Uh, PVPA. Oh, P I never got back. <laughs> PV, PC did. Remember, okay. I put both RTA agencies. Those are what are called regional transit. Okay. Our primary one is Franklin Regional, and then the right. area one is um, Pioneer Valley Transit Authority, and they would be under a subcontract with FRTA. And uh, no, we did not hear back from them, but you know, obviously since then we did restructure both this transportation service stuff that we're working on, and you authorize the companion services so Cindy wants to use the companion approach to deal with those few areas where we had people where there were gaps in service. Because some of those services were just because of people's schedule, not that they didn't have vehicles and other family support people to drive. Okay. So we might want to take that one off, uh, Mr. Vice Chairman. Well, my concern is one of the individuals that approached us uh, needs to have a vehicle that uh, can transport a wheelchair. So yep. is, is that, do you feel that's being addressed or? Well, we haven't, I mean, aside from, there's only been people that have been making issues about this and one of them was more more of a convenience issue that you knew about because of people's competing private schedule and then the other one was a uh, an individual who we're trying to get paired up through a companionship program approach again these two um, service level adjustments between transportation and companionship you have approved both of those in the last month and a half well, I think the last time we talked to Pioneer Valley Planning, you know, on community block grants, uh, she held out hope that uh, we might still be able to get a vehicle. Well, that um, is true, but the issue now is you have a shortage of people to drive them. So adding another one, the concern of the Council on Aging Directors, adding another vehicle that you don't have enough people to run staff and maintain, you want to hire them as employees. Yeah, but my argument was that you might be able to get people to drive a smaller vehicle. Right. You know, some people aren't comfortable driving a bus. So that would be my argument. In a vehicle like that would be very helpful for people in wheelchairs uh, uh, to make those runs. And of course it would uh, cost a lot less because of the, the gas. Right. Well, then, I, I, I would suggest you, the chair designate the vice chair to meet with the council on aging director and myself about that issue. I understand Mr. Fox's point. As he gets closer to retirement age, he's looking, at, he, he he he's looking to do a few little extra yeah. things, and, and you're much better in that van than you are on the bus. So <laughs> that's the good thing about the mask. They hide the smiles they to do. the last minute. Yeah. So yeah, I would love the, the motion for Mr. Fox to uh, check into this apparently with the, the uh, senior center. Make that a form of a motion? Oh, certainly. Yeah. All those in favor? Governor Mogul and I. Joe Didi, aye. Mr. Fox, good luck. Abstention. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and please don't start till after Valentine's Day. Okay, thank you. Right. I know she had some great comments about the smaller van. Yeah, you know? I, I think it. I think he's, he's it's, right. It's perfect. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the big van is great, but, but if you, I don't know if anybody just wants to hop in and drive that to. Yeah, a, a doctor's appointment in Chicopee or Springfield or something like that. If you had like a Ford Transit Connect or yep. a Sprinter or something like that, that's more of a passenger off. car that yeah. can that's wheelchair yeah. accessible but right. maneuverable. Yeah, and I've I've seen it at other senior yeah. centers, uh, and it, you know, I, I, again, I, I think you'd have luck getting volunteers to drive a vehicle. Like you're going to have more and more, like you say, we're a grand community. So we are a grand community. You know, we're putting out more firemen for a reason and more yeah. paramedics. So, yeah. and we're the vehicle getting... could maybe even be utilized by the fire department. You know, as a chase vehicle. Yeah. All right. Stop while you're at. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you. 
Jeez. All right. School signage for open space parcel usage. Who's <laughs> signage for open space? How did we, 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 I know we looked into that last time around. It, 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 it didn't get the support. It didn't get the support. But I, I think that, you know, the, it's a it's needed it came out of the open space plan yep. that i served on uh i know that we're working on things uh, on the website but still it would be nice that we had signs that all had the town logo on it all had the rules and regulations on it and all specified what the location was you know because in the open space hearings we had numerous people not just people new to the community, people who have lived here for many years did, know. don't sure. know where some of these locations are. I don't know where I'll be. And they don't know what the rules are. What do you do? Can you bring a dog? Can you have a fire? Can you picnic? Can you do this? Can you do that? Right. And so I, I think it would be extremely helpful. Um, I, I, I would hope that uh, um, different organizations, uh, conservation and uh, Park and Rec would uh, uh, support it. I think one of the, from the hearings, was it a year ago? Yeah. Prior to the budget season, one of the pushback on that was, one of the pushback on that was the lack of a real estimate around the dollars that were gonna be required. And we were kind of taking an estimated, pretty good estimate of what we thought right. it was gonna be. Right. But, um, you know, the. The CPC did fund the uh, right to farm signs all over town. They but they came in with we're going to do this many signs. Yep. They're four dollars and eighty two cents done. a piece. Right. So this is how much is the pole, the staples, the, yeah. and so they kind of had a concrete package. I think maybe um, between and you know right now the conservation coordinator is an open spot, but you know maybe we can find some people uh, to kind of get some better estimates within that shot close of what those signs are going to cost. So then we could then go and make the project with better numbers to CPC and it might be more appealing. Did we ever figure out the verbiage for the signs? I think the, the signs would, you know, number one, specify the, the name of the location and then would specify the, the different rules. Did we ever, did we what? ever button down what the rules would be? Well, I think most of them were pretty much common sense, you know. No, I understand. No, no uh, loitering, no littering, uh, you know, no fires, uh, no smoking, you know, etc. Uh, but I think that many of the places, obviously, uh, you know, we encourage hiking, we encourage picnicking. Yeah. Um, and I, I believe is that I haven't heard of any prohibition on those parcels of not having a dog right. as long as you picked up after um you know uh, but it, i mean there were common sense rules yeah and i wouldn't want to jump in and say <clears throat> perhaps one way to do it is to have a standard sign like that and then you'd have you know town of south seal to be consistent right you'd have a blank spot where the sign maker would put the name of the particular place you sure. have the five or eight rules that we have right in general and then you could have room on the pole for a smaller one with particular rules Specific that apply to that, that area. one, right. right? And then, but then you could say, we're gonna make 15 of these big signs, 15 of the little signs, the text is irrelevant. And then you can, you could cost it up. And well, that's say, what I'm getting at. This it, is what it's it, gonna it, be. Right. It's gonna be $6,000 all in. Yeah. And yeah. now you can go to CPC with a project. You don't have to have somebody graphic lay out the sign yet, get the funding, yeah. then you do this, you know, have somebody lay it out and make them. And you know, I'm sure we could. Uh, I can get you a quote. DPW I can get you a quote tomorrow. If it's, yeah. if that's what. Right. That's so what I was getting. Could Joel DPW to put them in for us, yeah. right? Or buildings and grounds? I don't know. Yeah. But you know, um, easy to do. But I think that would make a more appealing yeah. project to the to the CPC from that point of view. Yes. Um, make me get up again. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, I, let me, I'll get in front of that one. I'll get to a quote within two weeks. Per sign. And then we can, like you say, can we do the math? And it is what it is. Yeah, just say, you know, yeah. I think the number that was, I mean, I put forth the motion last year during the budget hearing to actually fund those signs. I think it's a worthwhile project. We spent 
literally millions of dollars on these facilities. Yep. We spent millions of dollars improving them. We spent, we developed open space recreation plan. We developed a website to point out where they are. Here you could put the locations on the ground so when people get to yeah. them, they go, oh, I'm here, here's what it is. I think it's a great idea. Um, so I think it, you know, it, it certainly falls right in, in CPC's wheelhouse if they'd like to do it. But just give them the data that they, well, they, yeah, and I don't blame them. They want an actual number no, I, I, that works. My point, yeah, absolutely. Right? It was one of the you know, key contentions was like, how much is it? Well, we think it's about this, but okay, here you go. Right. This is what we want to do. Ballpark. You know, and then unfortunately, it gets morphed, right? So at least if we can say it's it's X, it's two by two, and this is what yep. it, you know, signage is verbiage is verbiage, but right. they're all standard done. Right, but each one's going to be a little custom, away. so it's yeah. not like you're printing fifteen oh, of the same thing. So that it does be, you know, I, you know, I'm not picking on. Agcom, but they did. They had a very almost identical proposal, except that they came in. We were going to make fifteen signs, and they were this, and they yeah. were they were done, and they had the numbers. They were on their game. They had the yeah. number. They had the design, even down to the poles, and that was funded without any dissension or discussion. Sure. It was just fun. But they knew what they were getting. Correct. So I think learn from that and yeah. Go okay. All right. I'll take care of that. Okay. Town hall roof replacement. Yep. So that one. Is uh, obviously we've gone from the design services being received, evaluated to it's actively under design and being ready for um, fit out. So we can we can update that wording. Yep. Assistant C A O H R procurement. Right, Joe and I met about that in uh, labor. So is in the process of working on a draft. She's given me the first pass through on it. And I'm, I'm going through it, and then I'm going to be meeting with Joe, and then I'll, I'll also be getting uh, inputs from area HR people, because that's going to be the more important function of that dual function. And yeah. come before the board for review. Yep. And then it'll eventually get released out. Yeah, we need it. we're going to stay on top of that this year. That's yeah, because you've already made a commitment to put the dollars in the budget, so. Yep. Chairman of the Finance Committee has also been asking me about making sure that that's underway. Yep. Good. Green Energy Program. Okay. Well, we got four. Four out of the five elements are done, and the remaining yep. element is the um, the audit by EverSource and their designee. So that has been ongoing. With yep. um, Art Lawler had done one of them, and then. Uh, Mr. Sutton had participated in a walkthrough in the last couple of weeks. I think, Joe, you and I were at the schools that day. Yes, we were. So uh, David was out dealing with that issue. And now we're waiting for the results of that audit to come back to both and to see what they also come away with from the schools. Yes. And as you can see, you signed one of their invoices tonight. So you saw the work product um described on where they are in terms of a product so we will be updating with that thank you select board office restructure review right we finished that joe you and i had done that so that item is done okay road projects infrastructure that'll never be done you know that should <laughs> Well, we'll be discussing, I mean, Randy touched yeah. upon it last week, but we'll be discussing that in the budget process. Absolutely. I mean, obviously, at the same time, ARPA, you know, did help, but that's not a, a road per se project in the uh, other uh, funding is more of bridges and culverts. So we're, we're waiting to see what else is going to come from that for uh, funding. So I have had preliminary conversations with Dana Roscoe and the regional planning agency, but, you know, we, we had, need to have some leadership from the state legislative delegation that the board could speak to on how they're going to enter DOT and how funds can make it to us for, um, you know, road paving projects. Understood. Okay. ARPA funds phase one. Yep. You probably should amend this to just just to 
phase one projects have been identified and approved and they're underway. Dick and I opened up bids last week for the wear gates. Um, the numbers do look favorable, but he is going through his due diligence on those. So we might have a situation where that, that um, we're fortunate where that one runs under the estimate and then we're probably going to need some more dollars for the water line transmission. Not a lot, you know, but just uh, we have some issues there. We have to accommodate for the Italian bond um, project. So, uh, so we'll reword that word, um, that description on that one. In phase two, you'll be dealing with for next June in terms of that allocation comes in. I think we should carry that now. I think you should bust up the, the phase one into the projects and then our for phase two, we should carry for discussion so that we have a little bit more. We know the yeah. dollar amount, we know the when, so now we can start working the list now to, to line them up better. Well, that's fine. We can we can just put in a line yeah. with ARPA phase two project. My suggestion. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, we'll add a ARPA phase two project item. LPP agent with Suffield Connecticut review. Yeah, when when I reviewed that with Doug, uh, the language that that agreement uh, shows that it's. Uh, it doesn't expire until 2024, so I don't think we need to be oh, no. carrying that right now. That's that's wonderful. And, um, uh, you just got to be aware not to send out nasty grams this year. Maybe we can look well, a little better at that. Part of it is, I mean, we can take this off the list, but I think you know, no. continuing our relationship with the new first selectman in Suffield and um, the entities on the lake over there as well is still of paramount importance. Yeah. Kind of keeping the peace around the lake. Yeah. Good idea. Yep. So, what do you want to do? How do you how do you want to amend that, gentlemen? I wouldn't. I think we just taken care of it. I just want to. It is kind of a, something we need to continue to work on, and we need to work with. The so LPP. just re just remove that wording for now. I would. Yeah. If they're going to send letters out this year, we'd like to know ahead of time. That's all. Gotta stay on there. Yeah. Agenda. Okay. Podcast capability project for municipal buildings. Yeah, that's we're we're going to be working on that with uh, Ken Stomsky and uh, and Peter Cowles and our uh, Massachusetts State computer vendor contract. Okay. Slate roof and cupola ass assignment for the police department. Yep, that's the, uh, Mr. Lawler had developed a draft RFP and he's meeting with the uh, Historical Commission, I believe, tonight. I believe so, yeah. So we'll see what comes out of that. Uh, that's going to take a number to, to go through, but let's be clear on that one. That's just an assessment at this point. Right now, the right. priority is the town hall roof replacement. Because yeah. that would end up, I don't want to have projects competing with each other for CPC allocation. And then we added the other two on. Yeah. What, I, what was the second one? I'm yeah, sorry. That, that I got the fire chief one recruitment. Too. I got that one wrong. Yeah. Now. What was the second one? What was the second one, Carl? Was that ARPA phase two projects? Got that one. You, there was two at the top of your soliloquy there, and I only got one. Budget FY23? Yeah, budget. Yeah, okay. the FY23 budget. Uh, FY23 budget, and okay. then it was the Thank recruitment. you. Yeah. That's kind of the top of the list every year anyway. Right, yeah. That's yeah, well, it's one of the it's one of the large consumers of your time and effort, gentlemen. <coughs> sure is. Should we put something on here about the removal of the association building? Yeah, you. we can do that. I'm going to be bringing forward that. That's a, that's a budget issue. Uh, I was considering it a budget issue, but if you want to, we we can also um, break that out, and we'll we'll put that on the um, on the list going forward. Just so we don't lose sight of it. It's in the back, you can't. On the left hand side, <laughs> maybe you've seen it. I, I don't understand why the fire years. department can't have one of those training sessions. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing, Mr. Vice Chairman. You know, just have that training session and 
bring in all the departments, uh, neighboring departments, and uh, uh, Mr. Didi will probably uh, supply hot dogs and hamburgers and ice cream. Well, you know, it, it is as long as you have the discussion with the appropriate people that you've um, mitigated the hazardous materials, then maybe the balance of the things that are on site could be an exercise for you. Uh, I'm, not getting, I'm not list. getting any head shaking from the fire chief, so I think uh, oh, we might as well forget it. Yeah. We could just do it the last week of October. <laughs> Well, that's true. <laughs> All right, so we'll we'll add. So there's at least four items we're adding on, and then we're eliminating some, and we're going to okay. update the language in the others. And in the next week or so, we'll provide you with an updated copy for you to have review. And, and, you. and by all means, if any of you think of something else that comes to mind, we can look at adding that to this uh, document. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right. That's all I see for new business. Carl, do you have any other new business? Uh, no, not tonight, sir. All right. Mr. Fox? No, sir. Mr. Mulgren? No, sir. Okay. Old business. We have our normal verbiage that sits there. Um, Town Hall Group Design, we talked about the Sewerwood Westfield, Boards and Committee Procedure, Building Department of Permanent Gas Fees. Did you, were you going to meet? With yeah, I, I did meet with him. Uh, we sat down, discussed it. Uh, I think he had some logical and sound reasons for uh, his proposal. Yeah. He did agree to shave a, a little bit. Um, you know, his philosophy is basically. Uh, the fee should cover the building department's operation, right. and the, the inspector basically, if 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 they're doing inspections, they're not working, you know. So, right. and um, you know, this way we're competitive, and people show up and do inspections. I uh, relayed our concern, uh, and he uh, made a, a commitment to me and to this board that. Uh, he would always be respectful and uh, of uh, a grain community and uh, also any uh, people with uh, disabilities. Uh, he'd be working in that direction uh, to address those. Um, so I, I think the recommendation that we now have, uh, I, I would make a motion to approve. Okay. Yeah, you have that in your mail folder, the uh, the amended version. All right. Have you seen it, Mr. Mobile? I saw it in there. Okay. Uh, I'll second the motion as a, as a... All right. Does they second? All those in favor? I will say Joe Didi, aye. Let's talk to I. Doug Mobile and I. All right. But the marshals are they okay with it? Or? They're okay with it up there. Um, just for a Never second, uh, on uh, talking about sewer, yeah, I did have a couple more informal conversations with uh, uh, city councilors of our neighboring uh, community of Westfield. Yep, and once again, have uh, told them of our concerns and uh, that. Uh, eventually when the contract would be coming up or agreement would be coming up for renewal that I would hope that they would uh, try to work with us because of our longstanding relationship, mutual aid, uh, assisting with uh, uh, helping them with the gas line, things of that nature. So uh, the, the counselors I've talked to have been receptive. Uh, I told them I certainly understand that they have constituents that they have to answer to in the last year. I can appreciate that, but I only told them that I felt that uh, uh, we really didn't get the best end of the deal, the original agreement, and uh, we've invested millions of dollars running that new line uh, down Main Line Drive yep. to the, you know, which benefits uh, everybody. Everybody. Uh, so 
like I said, uh, the people I've talked to so far have been receptive. So. Carl, that gas line runs under the rail trail, right? Uh, yes, it does for a certain certain part. It comes from the gas takeoff station. Yeah. And and off of, so you, you, you got to look at that portion of the rail trail as a closed cap utility corridor with a bike trail over it. Uh, and I do. But what's our deal with Westfield for that gas line? Uh, you you, re you receive payments. We have a uh, payment from the West and Electric through. Should an we be looking at when has that rate been changed at all? Uh, that okay. goes up. That that actually has an incremental adjustment every week. So if you want to see what that uh, contract looks like, we can. Would you like just, me to just, give that to Mr. Fox? Is that what I'm sensing? No, 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 no. no, no, no. I just I yeah, see no. where he's going. Just yeah. wondering. You know, we're great neighbors, and we're going to stay that way. Okay, but okay. I was just wondering how that worked. You know, yeah, that has a, that has an escalator, sir. Field, I get that, but our you know the gas goes right under our road. Okay. I just, just, there is, a, there is an escalator. Outside the box. Look, we have, we have, I, I, I completely understand this. And they have my number if they want to call and reach out and complain. But remember, we I all are working with them and saving them and, and it's, millions of dollars on this regional dispatch approach. Millions of dollars are coming into Westfield to fund that project. We're probably going to end up working with them on, with their G&E. We're, we're, uh, we're going to work on them with a lot of projects. Things. So I'm just plenty of opportunities to co to cooperate should everything else come into no I know just into line. And I right. think right now we're having a very good. positive dialogue. <laughs> yeah. Right, good. very positive. Good dialogue. for you, Mr. Fox. Yeah. Let me know when you need me to help you. Okay. I, <laughs> we, I know. We, 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 will, <laughs> we will tell. You probably won't be here anymore, so I'll help you as a private citizen. <laughs> but uh, just yeah, and they know how to find me when they want to call. Me. <laughs> Okay. Has anyone had a conversation with the new mayor? I have not. I have not either. I only uh, talked to him for a few minutes in passing, but I have. Uh, I haven't had a a, uh, a longer one with him, so I will reach out this week and make an appointment to sit down with him and say hi. Okay, it'll be okay. I I met him once uh, with you. In Westfield, at a uh, we went to um, oh the uh, city councilors were, oh, were up for like review or whatever candidate uh, candidacy. Yeah, yes. so we met. I we, remember we met. We met him for a few minutes outside. Yeah, a couple that years ago. That was before the last mayoral election. Correct. Yep. Correct. So I will reach out. Okay. All right, uh, Mr. Fox. Anything for old business? Uh, no. Um, I did meet, of course, uh, with the building inspector, so we did that. Yep. I did reach out uh, uh, to uh, our state rep, um, you know, and we were talking about uh, the possibility of uh, getting a position, an assistant, or, or I don't know. How did you refer to it as? Uh, the CAA. The HR procurement, Russ, and where we're going to place it in the building? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I, I did reach out to him and, and told them that uh, uh, we might need to re relocate uh, different offices, mm -hmm. you know, and I think he understood. I said, uh, it's a big building. We certainly want to keep him in this building. Yeah, absolutely. Um, because I think it's beneficial to the town. Uh, so I, I said that. Uh, we this wasn't something that was going to be happening overnight you know it's a uh, working uh, to make sure that we have the best location for for ken in his office and yep. uh and also for this new position if it's approved by the voters yep uh, but I, I think we got a big building here i think uh we can keep everybody happy Carl, how are we doing on storage? I, I had a walk through the other day downstairs and does each department, I mean, we're stuck we have to hold on to for X amount of years or even longer, correct? There is, Mr. Chairman. It's called, it's under the Secretary of State's records retention and disposal schedule. Yeah. Under the Secretary of State's office, uh, CMR, and that's regulated through the clerk's office. And we have asked people to identify all the different records they think they're going to be able to um, 
um, cull out and reduce and eliminate that we go through with a uh, and dispose of them. So uh, Michelle's getting uh, some costs from a vendor on some of that stuff, but you know it's an exercise that each department or board has to go through, and they have to make sure that they um, have the documentation to support that, and they got to file it with the clerk's office. Do we have enough storage room for all that stuff as time goes on? Well, well, I would imagine that uh, that process is going to free up some. And then I would imagine as we use more, you know, uh, digital records and electronic records and all of the other management that you have along with those, that that could, uh, that we should be able to hold off on having to expand any space. But I don't see us capturing any of that space back and repurposing it for something else. Oh, no, no, um, no, no. I just want to know if we had enough. That's all. Well, you know, every once in a while, this, this, every once in a while, there's discussions about, you know, your, you know, different departments or whether or not you, you know, cases. So let's see what the, the budget process uh, discussion holds. I know Sid would like to have another edition on the senior center. So, yeah, I was thinking or to records. I wasn't looking to put a second you know, floor on it. Yeah. Well, that's that's what I'm saying. So, you know, it's a. Yeah. I'm not sure you want to open that door yet, but you know, we've got other projects we need to finish. Yeah, very true. All right, thank you, Mr. Mogan. Anything for old business? No, sir. All right. We are not meeting next week. We are not. Um, Order your flowers early, I'm told. I don't know. <laughs> and pray you get them. <laughs> yeah, if I come home with flowers, you'll think something's up. So I, don't want to start I don't want to start a trend. Yeah, I don't want to start a trend now. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, it's, Mr. Fox. It's people like you. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it is. It really is. All right. What, so a, digital, what a digital flowers look like. Uh, I, I think uh, we don't need the CAO around anymore. No, tonight. Okay. Know. All right, so that concludes our meeting this evening. We are going to go in executive session to not reconvene. I have one question. Oh, go right ahead. I'm sorry. For those in the audience. Any better, any worse? Better, worse, different, same? I think you may have opened the portal to out. Yeah. I don't. But actually, I think it was better. Thank so, you. I mean, I'm in the front row, but thank you. And you're probably a little closer, or just the uh, tables yeah. are about the same? Well, maybe the same yeah, or if you were further out that way, yeah, so. Yeah. We figured we'd give it a try because see if the acoustics are better front to back than side to side. We'll see. Yeah, Sorry. it actually does. <laughs> Thank you. Good. I think that's your one. Is that what you think it is? It sounds familiar to the funny one in the garden. And with the weather out there right now, it probably could be. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. I'll make a motion to go in executive session per MGL chapter C30A S21 number two and number three, chapter 214, section 1B, and CMR 20 03. We'll go in executive session to conduct, conduct uh, collective bargaining sessions with non union personnel and to not reconvene an open session. We'll go in executive session to conduct contract negotiations with non-union personnel and to not reconvene an open session. <sighs> Let's declare that an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the body and to not reconvene an open session. Exemption number three, yeah, sure executive did. session to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining and that the chair moves to go in executive session to conduct strategy yeah. sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel and to not reconvene an open session. Mm -hmm. We will go in executive session to discuss strategy with respect to litigation and that the chair declare that an open meeting may have a detriment on the litigation position of the body and to not reconvene an open session. A person shall have the right against unreasonable, substantial, and serious interference with their privacy. The superior court shall have jurisdiction and equity to enforce such right and action therewith to award damages. Joe DDI. Russ Fox. Uh, Doug Love and I. Folks, have a great night. Thanks for coming out. We'll see you soon.